I was very happy to see the new Susan's Garden Club dies at Tonic Studios and knew I had to purchase some to play with. These are the ones that I got. Several uh, hollies and berries, beautiful berries, the columbine die set, and the gathering basket and galvanized bucket set. This was the one that excited me the most because I love to play with techniques for wooden and metallic looks on my cards. Hello and welcome to Karen's Creative Cards on YouTube. I am Karen Hashik and I'm sharing four different cards with different techniques along with some of my favorites dies from this release and others. Slimline cards are trending right now and I created this Thinking of You card with the beautiful berry bush um, dies as well as um, some dies from um, Bright Rosa and Sue Wilson. Um, so this is the die that I used for those greens and I also like I said used some Bright Rosa and Sue Wilson dies. Um, the basket looks so real, right? I started by embossing uh, a crackle stamp background and then I sprinkled on Bister powders. Um, Bister powders are watercolor powders but they're made out of wood. So they have the, those wood tones to them. I use three colors, the brown, the natural, and the mahogany. So you can see touches of the mahogany in there. And you just sprinkle it on and spritz it with water until you get the look you like and then you let it dry. Now I'm going to do a video on the basket, both basket techniques that I show soon. And in the description box are links to some previous tutorials I had done. The berries are done with the Nouveau Harvest Moon Glitter Accent. So um, I thought that was a nice touch and I'm real happy with how that one turned out. Uh, here is another basket card that I made. This time I filled it with kitties. Um, this is another faux leather technique um, that you you that you do with glycerin and distress inks. Now in my description box I have links to previous tutorials that I've done on um, all of these techniques. Um, this one is done with glycerin and um, distress inks and is not at all hard to do um, and again I and I think in the future I'm going to be playing with these basket techniques more and making some masculine cards. Um, on this card I use the um, pretty columbine die set for the flowers and um, look just look at this bucket it is bumpy and textured and a and a gorgeous mix of silvers and golds and blacks um, in there. Um, I uh, did what I call the metallic camo technique and it's something I think I came up with myself. I, I know it came to my mind and I tried it and I haven't seen elsewhere and I'm going to show you how that is done. So we have the bucket that has that gorgeous bumpy texture and those beautiful flowers and this celebrate is from tonic studios this is the card that i'm making in the video um, just take a look at that um, bucket i i'm it makes me so happy it's all bumpy and textured and has golds and blacks in there um, i uh, started with an easel card so um, I'm going to show you too how to make that and um, it's held up by a uh, bright rosa thinking of you die um, and then the brown front was cut out with a wonky rectangle die from cut plurations and I added a dragonfly punch um, and all of those um, dies in there are from bright rosa and tonic and um, I'm going to show you how I did that. A few years ago, I discovered that if you sprinkle embossing powders onto the sticky side of a two-sided score 
tape piece and you melt it with a heat gun, the result is a gorgeous textured metallic looking finish. Now I've played with regular blacks, gold, and silver embossing powders and I called it metallic camo and I have a link to tutorials in my description box and I've also played with other colors of embossing powders and I called that one hot camo. Um, it kind of has a camouflage look. Um, for these buckets I wanted to try to get a more textured um, look so I'm using some specialty embossing powders from Stampendous and Seth Apter and I just love how it turned out. So I um, have sheets of Suquang score tape and you could also get in rolls but when you need a bigger piece like that the sheets work the best and I've applied, um, I die cut the bucket um, out of a piece of uh, granite um, cardstock, and then I put a piece of these, this Suquang score tape on top before I cut the bucket out. So um, that's how it's going to start. And then um, we're going to sprinkle on some of the aged black and aged gold stampendous embossing powders and um, the reason these are called aged is because they're a mixture of colors and textures right in there and then I have Seth Apter's Rocky Road which again is a real fun mix of different colors and textures so um, this ended up um, having a in my opinion, very cool look to it. So I'm going to start with some of the Stampendous Aged Black Embossing Powders. And if you can see, um, there's blacks and golds and kind of a gray in there. Um, and um, it's chunkier than most embossing powders, but that's why it's really fun for these techniques. Don't want to lose any of that beautiful embossing powder and then I'm going to add a little of the aged gold um, the first one that I did I ended up with in my opinion too much gold so what I did was I just reheated it and added some more of the black so you can do that until you get the look that you like you could make it as thick as you wanted to um, but I um, so I just want a little of the gold And then I have this Seth Apter one that has a real cool mix of textures and colors in it. And I basically want to cover the whole bucket so that there isn't any more stickiness to it. I'm going to try pressing down what I have using that tape from the original. Now, I think I'm going to try to press some more of this in. because There is still some stickiness there. So I don't spill these gorgeous embossing powders. I'm going to quick close them. And now I am going to use my heat gun. It doesn't take very long at all, and I want you to see that um, beauty of that embossing powder um, getting to be textured and melted. So.
so the embossing powder has melted and you see the golds and the blacks and the different colors on there and it does look like an old bucket to me and it's very very textured and bumpy and um, I think it's a really a neat look. So um, I have the um, easel card. Um, it's a top folding card and then the top piece you fold in half again down so then that stands up um, and that's why it's called an easel card. Um, I uh, again used a cup cup parations um, rectangle stitch die there and this is from Bright Rosa and I've raised that to be the holder of the um, flower bucket or um, and I created this one a little earlier um, I die cut the um, dark green leaves there out of the uh, Susan's Gardens um, dies and then the rest of them are out of the Bright Rose of Fern die set and um, I have that textured bumpy looking um, galvanized bucket there which um, I love the look of and I decided that I was going to have the uh, middle of these be popped up and um, the sides down so um, it looks even more like a bucket so I have some pop dots in the center and some thin score tape on the side So our easel card with the pretty bucket full of ferns and um, twigs is done um, and ready to send to someone. I had so much fun playing with this embossing powder techniques and I will share another video soon with more ideas and die cuts and this gorgeous metallic or hot camo technique. Thanks for watching, sharing, and subscribing and thanks too for helping me share the joy of creativity.